August 20th, 1966, 18 year old Jorge da Costa Alves set out to fly a kite on Ventame Hill near Rio de Janeiro. When he arrived, he discovered something strange. Just two days prior, he had seen a pair of men laying on top of the hill. And today, when he returns, these two men are still laying there. But now a scent of death has filled the air. The men were wearing matching raincoats and bizarre metal eye coverings. Next to their bodies was an empty water bottle, a small amount of cash, and a notebook with a series of strange notes. Notes that would start a decades long mystery and to this day remains unsolved. This is the lead mask case of Brazil. The bodies turned out to be those of 34 year old Miguel Jose Viana and 32 year old Manuel Pereira da Cruz. Both were electronic technicians from Campos dos Cortacazes, a town roughly 175 miles away from where their bodies now lay. Three days before their bodies were found, they had left town, telling their families they were headed to Sao Paulo to get electronic parts in a used car. A friend of theirs had dropped them off at a bus station, but noted that they had boarded a bus headed towards Rio and not Sao Paulo, as they had stated. During the next two days, they were seen purchasing the matching raincoats and seen in a bar, where the bartender noted that they seemed to be in a hurry, constantly checking their watches. At 3.15 p.m. that same day, they were seen hitching a ride in a jeep up to the hill. At 5 p.m. that evening, Jorge de Costa Elvez saw the men at the top of the hill alive. The next day, he saw them laying there, but he assumed they were sleeping. Two days later, when he returned, he discovered the napping men were actually dead. And by the following day, the police had launched an investigation. No external injuries were seen on the men. Toxicology reports were unable to be conducted because of the state of the bodies. Left outside for four days in Brazil's rainy season, one can imagine. This left police with only the physical clues, a pair of lead masks, and a strange notebook. The notebook contained several pages of mathematical equations. Other pages seemed to be lists of numbers referencing to electrical equipment and components. And a few notes were regarding a dosage of an unknown drug. Sunday, one capsule after lunch. Wednesday, one capsule at bedtime. And finally a note that seemed to have led them to the hill. Be at the place arranged at 1630. Take capsules at 1830. After feeling effects, protect half the face with lead mass. Await the agreed signal. Police noted that these notes read as if they were dictated to the men by a third party. Then there were the masks themselves. These were quite bizarre to the police as just 40 years earlier they had dealt with a similar case. A TV technician named Hermes was found on a different hill in the same state, with a lead mask found close to his body. It's important to note that these masks are not full face masks, simply opaque eye coverings. They would not protect someone from something like radiation, they are simply used to block out one's vision. Then the police had their first big break when they interviewed the men's families and discovered their strange obsession. Pera de Cruz's wife told the police that they were both scientific spiritists students of the 1800 spiritism movement, specifically the one that was started by Allan Kardec. Kardec was a French educator who turned to the paranormal subjects later in life, authoring several books on the subject. In fact, Allan Kardec was not his real name, but a pen name he was told to use by a spirit named Truth. Several of Kardec's books were found in Pera de Cruz's library. In Vienna's workshop, they found metal shavings that matched up to the lead mask, and a book with phrases about intense luminosity highlighted. The police were also told that the men were not the only scientific spiritists in the area, and that the two belonged to an occult group that practiced this art together. The man who had dropped them off at the bus station, Elshio Gomes, was also a member of this group. Police turned their attention to Gomes, who admitted the existence of the group, but he implied that it was more loose and far-spreading, 
and that most electronic technicians in Brazil were practicing some form of spiritism. He said that himself and two other men had been attempting to contact aliens through electrical and telepathic techniques. They specifically were trying to get in contact with spirits on Mars, and even had built a homemade device to do so. Gomes said that this device had exploded when they tried to operate it, but Gomes spoke of other attempts that were successful. On June 13, 1966, numerous witnesses reported an explosion on the beach northeast of Rio de Janeiro that rocked buildings as far as 15 kilometers away. Local fishermen also witnessed the event, and they reported that a flying saucer was seen to fall into the sea. Gomes told investigators that the explosion followed an intentional meeting between members of the spiritualist group and a UFO. He claimed that after it visited with them for about five minutes, it left with a blinding flash and a large explosion. Bizarrely, the same day the two men hiked up the hill, a local woman with her child reported seeing a UFO within the vicinity of the hill. Gracinda Barbosa, Cantonho da Sousa, reported that she saw an oval-shaped object of an orangey color with a band of fire around its edges, sending out rays in all directions, hanging over the top of the hill. According to Da Sousa, the object rose and fell vertically for some three or four minutes before taking off. Not knowing what to make of this information, police chalked it up to be a drug-fueled misadventure gone wrong. The official cause of death was ruled cardiac failure. Most accept that this was the result of some kind of drug taken by the pair, but many believe that the men were actually successful in contacting entities, and that these entities were less than friendly. As crazy as this might sound, there is a continuing history of violent UFO encounters in Brazil. November 4, 1957 Two guards stationed at a Taipao fort outside of Sao Paulo saw a strange object descend from the sky. The bright orange colored object was moving fast towards the fort, but slowed when it was just 50 meters above them. The two then heard a strange buzzing noise and felt a strong heat wave coming from the craft. The energy wave knocked out the base's power, and it had a very strange effect on the men. This energy wave lit their uniforms on fire. One even panicked and hopped off the guard's tower, while the other was knocked out entirely. By the time the rest of the soldiers responded, the craft was gone. A few minutes later, the power was returned, and the two men were sent to the infirmary. The guards had second-degree burns on more than 10% of their bodies. The incident was investigated not only by the Brazilian military, but it was disclosed in 2008 that the US Air Force looked into it as well and even interviewed the two men. In 1977, the citizens of the Brazilian island, Colors, experienced a similar series of strange attacks. Nearly 35 people on the small island were zapped by UFOs. They received burns and small puncture wounds from these encounters, and hair would no longer grow in the affected areas. There were also a variety of mental effects. One doctor who investigated the case reported that victims experienced fatigue, dizziness, headaches, low blood pressure, and anemia in addition to the physical effects. About a decade later, famed ufologist Jacques Vallée and several others investigated the case and interviewed witnesses and saw the permanent effects of the wounds. Police even arrested a bird watcher at the time, believing he was coordinating the UFO attacks. In 2004, it was revealed that the Brazilian government put together a special team to investigate the incident, called Operation Saucer. They were able to photograph and have first-hand experiences on the island. But perhaps the most striking and violent encounter occurred in 1994, and once again, just outside of Sao Paulo. While cattle mutilations are well documented and almost a common occurrence, this case is one of the few ever recorded human mutilations. An unidentified body was found with bizarre wounds. Several perfect holes appeared to be drilled into the body, two in the chest and one in the right thigh. The body contained no liquid blood. Several organs and body parts had been removed. The left eye, the left ear, 
the lips, the tongue, and the jawbone. The man also had most of his internal organs removed. Of course, most violent crimes in the world have a human explanation, and most skeptics would say that this one is such. But the wounds are almost identical to thousands of cows, horses, and even chickens that have been documented around the globe to have been mutilated shortly after the appearance of a UFO phenomena in the area. Were Miguel Jose Viana and Manuel Piera de Cruz victims of some type of similar deadly UFO encounters? Or were they simply victims of their own paranormal misadventure? The debate among ufologists continued to this day. Some skeptics have pointed to a prisoner in Brazil who claimed that he helped rob and kill the men. But considering that they still had money on their bodies, this seems unlikely. For now it seems that the mystery of the lead mask continues. That is it for this one. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. This will help my channel grow. If you have a future story suggestion, or would like to contact me directly, you can do so by emailing me at creepyunsolvedmedia at gmail.com. Looking for more content? Be sure to visit creepyunsolved.com, where you'll find podcast episodes, YouTube videos, and the Creepy Unsolved blog. Until next time, this is Dylan signing off. I look forward to your comments below.